Hey everybody, welcome to Video Game Corner. I'm Jatos, and today I'm going to be doing another tutorial on how to make your own NES reproductions. Uh, I've done the video on the how to identify different types of boards, and I've done the desoldering video. Well, the next step in the process is the EPROM chip. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to split the ROM and burn it onto the chip. And then the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually assemble everything together to get yourself a working game. So stick with me, and I'm going to show you all the different um, tools we're going to use, like the EPROM programmer, the EPROM eraser, and the software needed to do all of this stuff on how to, like Famirom and um, the Willem software to, um, that, that does all the work for you, that does everything you need. So stick with me and let's go ahead and get to that and I'll show you right now. What you have here is a program called Famirom. Now what Famirom does for the NES chips is that it splits them. You have to split your chips because sometimes you're gonna, you, you always have to split them. Now the other thing people forget is that if you're using a chip that's the wrong size, say, like I like to use the same type of chip for a lot of things. I, I like to use the 27C2001s. And I like for games like uh, Earthbound Zero, you would have to use a 1001. Now I can't just program 2001 into the 1001 without doing something different. I have to take the file and, and do what's called padding it. Basically what that means is you have to fill up the chip when you, when you, when you burn it. You can't just do half of it. It, ha it can't just be half the information. It has to be... So a lot of people go and use their DOS commands in their computer and they'll, they'll basically um, copy it onto itself. I don't like to do that. I use this little nifty program called Famirom. And it was designed by a guy on, um, um, on the internet. Um, he goes by the name of Lincoln. And um, let me see. Let's take a... Let's take HeroQuest here. That's good as file as any. So you take HeroQuest. All this stuff pops up. It shows you down here that you have your program and your character. Now, the program is for a 10, 1, 1,024 kilobytes, or you would use a 27C010 or a 1001. Now, what you can do, being that I use the 2000 size, you can click down here, and it'll go to 27C020 or 27C2001, which would be the same. And what it does is it doubles the size. So when it's all said and done, you go down here, and it'll say program 2048 kilobytes times 2. And what that does is that it, it has doubled the size of the chip. So now it's ready to burn. Then you can put it in here. And now I'm going to show you what the um, EPROM programmer looks like. There is the Elkbrom Programmer. Now, there's a model out there called the Willem Programmer, and this is a Willem clone. A lot of people will buy these clones. You can get them on, on, on eBay from the Chinese sellers for about $35 to $45, and that includes shipping. And basically what you do is you just stick your chip right here into this, and then you pull the little uh, lockdown thing, and it just plugs into your computer and computer, uh, goes into the USB, and basically that's it. And that's what actually runs, and you have to always make sure you adjust the dip switches. Okay, this is the software you have to use. Now, what you have to do is you have to basically, what you're going to do is you go in, you open up the software. Now you have to figure out which type of chip you use. Now being that I use the um, 27C2001 chips, you go up here in the device, you go into EPROM, and then you basically you go there and you pick your chip. Now down here is going to be a dip switch and those are you have to set all those dip switches on your actual programmer 
to say, okay, that's what needs to be, you know, that's that's what the, how that has to be set up so the chip knows. I mean, so the program knows you're using that type of chip, so everything matches up. And you can also click right here in this part. Then you go in and you load it up, and let's do Castlevania Overflow Darkness. Open it up. Then you would go up here. You check your chip which says a little question mark and then once it it will verify everything and then you go up here to a little uh, lightning bolt with the little chip thing and you click on there and it'll basically go through and verify it and tell you whether it works or not and it'll say device programmed okay or it'll say error if there's an error you got to go ahead and get another chip try again now that's what you need to do. Now let's go to the um, Eprom Eraser in case you do have problems with the chip. Alright, this is my Eprom Eraser. Basically what you're going to do is you take the chips, you drop them in, close the drawer, turn it on, and I usually set the timer for about 20 minutes and that seems to be plenty to uh, erase the chips because basically what you're doing is there's a uh, UV light in here and these little windows on the chips um, need to be, um, that's where all the information is stored and what the light does is it erases the chips, clears them out. If you sat these in the sun, I've heard it takes about three days or not three days but like three weeks for the sun to actually do it. Um, I, I hear a lot of different things. I don't know exactly what's true. It doesn't really matter because I don't leave anything out in the sun anyway. So what you want to do is you want to use the Eprom eraser. It takes about 20 minutes and it erases your chips. Now sometimes the chips will be burned and they won't do and you won't do you won't matter how many times you erase it, it's just shot. It just depends on the chips, how old they are, things like that. So let's move on to the next thing. Hey guys, thanks for watching my tutorial. Um, I didn't cover every little thing in the tutorial because there's so much to it. A lot of it is like a, a universal or basic thing. These are basic and universal things you need to know as opposed to everything is different. There's a lot of just basic. It's just like this is how you do it for every type of thing. It's just the settings are different on the, the equipment. So, but you know, if you guys want to try any of this stuff yourself and you get stuck or you aren't sure, just send me a message or put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it or I'll send you a message and I'll do my best to help you guys out. So just don't be afraid to ask questions. I'm here to help you guys. And I can't do everything so there's going to be some stuff I may not know and if I don't know I'll just tell you or I'll try to find somebody who can. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it helps you out in your uh, making your own reproduction games. So, um, my name's Jay Tose, and uh, this has been Video Game Corner, and I'll see you guys next time.